The Hurling Show, brought to you in association with Torpy. Torpy are leading hurling into a new future with Bamboo, a revolutionary hurley created using their unique engineered hurling performance know-how. Already being used by many inter-county players, Torpy's Bamboo is highly sustainable, offers players greater striking distance and a more consistent balance every time, without compromising on natural feel. Check them out on the Torpy website and in the link below and enter the promo code OURGAME to get yourself 10% off. Hello and welcome to the Hurling Show, joined by former Tipperary and Dublin hurler Ryan O'Dwyer. We're waiting for Michael Ryan to connect the former Watford manager. Ryan, we'll start off with yourself. How are you getting on? Not too bad, yourself? Oh, I'm not too bad. There's already comments flying in. I don't know if they're slating you, me, or anybody, but uh, get the comments in and, you know, let us know what you think. Vernie isn't here. Somebody's asking. He's away at the Galway races, and you know what? He's no loss at all, is he? He's no crack. No, 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 no. Ver Vernie won't be any crack. No, not at all. Hey, do you know what? I noticed some comments yesterday from, uh, well, this morning they've come out from Joe Canning. He's obviously retired. You've probably come up against him several times over the years. But um, I'll jump into what he said about um, about the hype and the pressure and stuff like that. And he goes, people often said to me, it would be great to be Joe Canning. And I'm like, no, live my life for a week or two and you'd love to get back to your own life again. It's not great at times. At other times it's fine. But there's always pressure to perform. And he goes on, uh, it's difficult when people are not in your circle. They think they can just go up and pull the piss out of you. And yeah, it's kind of a laugh for them more, to, more than anything most of the time. I remember I was out in Limerick after the All-Ireland in 2018, a month or two after, and I was just in a bar and a lad came up to me with a camera phone, just stuck it in my face and he was singing up Limerick and whatnot. So you get that kind of stuff when you're out about a lot of the time. I'm not the only one. There's loads of people prob that probably get that. Is that something that, that uh, you experienced over the years ever? Or like, do, do you, can, can you understand why Joe would be saying that? Well, I suppose, look, uh, from my situation is you, you might be more well known. Um, I think Joe would take it to the extreme, whether you're into hurling or football or not into none of them. You probably know who Joe Canning is. Um, so I think he, he is kind of like, he'd be like your, your Irish rugby players at the moment. Um, like your Paul O'Connell, you, you, you can't go anywhere. And if you see him, you you know them straight away. Um I was grand. Uh, not many people knew me unless I had a red helmet on me. So it was okay. And even at that, they did have to be. <laughs> or a red card. Thanks for that, prick. <laughs> uh, so unless, unless they're in front of me, it wasn't really an issue unless they're into hurling. But uh, yeah, look, I suppose it, it's part of the territory for Joe. He's so well known. He's so good. And he like he 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 does your media things he he was a spokesperson for a few different uh companies so like he's putting his face out there so he's going to get a little bit of a little bit of attention with it um my issue is the that lads think they have a divine right to annoy you um like you you could see that like celebrities come to ireland because they say oh it, it's nice in ireland you don't get bothered by paparazzi or anything like that and I don't, I don't, I, I think Ireland is like that. They're very respectful to celebrities and all that. But I think the GA people, it's like they, they feel they've ownership over you because, oh, well, you, you're not, you're not in movies, you're not on cameras. Like, uh, was it Matt Damon, uh, spent lockdown in Ireland? And, uh, I read there recently he, he, he's thinking of buying a house in Ireland because he said it's so nice here. GA players don't get that privilege. They, they, they people feel they have an ownership over you. And if you, if you, try to disregard them in any way at all. You're the greatest in the world, you know? Um, and, oh, who does he think he is? Do you know, he, he, Joe is a lad that just wants to go for a drink with a few friends and not be bothered. Um, now, look, I, I've no doubt if someone comes up and asks Joe for a picture, he, he'll, he'll say, yeah, that's no problem at all, or an autograph, that's no problem. But it's the, it's the line where you cross over from being respectful to being disrespectful and acting a clown. Um, I think that that's the line that some people uh, just don't know where it is. And I think uh, drink sometimes blurs that line. Um, and lads think they have a divine right. And it's gas. I've been out one or two times. <clears throat> well, lots of times. Um, and lads, <clears throat> lads are nice to you. 
uh, when they get a few drinks into them, then 2013 red card comes out and they just start abusing you. Oh, you cost Dublin all Ireland, but they were nice to you maybe an hour before that. So um, yeah, drink drink certainly does blur the lines. But uh, I think people have to be respectful. But you're always going to have the one or two. And sorry about the language now here. I shouldn't use it, but you'll always have the one or two arseholes. Um, and that's just part of it. But uh, yeah, I do I do feel sorry for Joe. Not for his hurling, I, I'm jealous of that, but I do feel sorry for the position he's in at times. He's he's up on a pedestal. Um, even every hurler in, in Ireland will say Joe is up on a pedestal. TJ Reid, Henry Sheffin, Owen Kelly, the, the tip Owen Kelly when he was hurling. Um, they're all up on a pedestal and they do get that little bit more attention um, and it's just having to deal with it, I suppose. Yeah. Well, number one, I don't think you deserved a red card that day. I've said that Thank before. You. Yeah, absolutely wrong decision. And you were man of the match that day up until that point, I would also say. Now, that's where the good, uh, me being a nice guy, will end. But, uh, <laughs> that's, would... that's the biggest compliment I've ever got from you. Yeah, Actually, yeah. sorry, it's the only compliment I've ever got from you. So, <laughs> so there's no competition. But what about uh, some of the big games you would have played against, Joe? So you obviously beat them in that Leinster final in 2013. Probably good days and bad days. But would you have had to plan specifically for him? Um, no, we, we were lucky in, I suppose, my early years with Dublin in 2011, 12, 13, 14. Um, we, we just put Peter Kelly on him. Um, Peter was like, he's, he's a phenomenal hurler. Um, forget about his man mark and he's just a phenomenal hurler in general. He could play in any line in the pitch and he plays in the forest for Luke and now. Um, but we just put him on him and he kept him quite like, no, you're not going to keep him scoreless. You're not going to keep him quite all together but it's tried to minimise him um, and Peter did that uh, every time um, and we were lucky I think the first couple of years we always had uh, we always had uh, had I don't know was it mentally or, or whatever but we always had Galway uh, we always got over him um, and they, they seem to have it again now uh, the la- out of the last three times they've played uh, Dublin have played Galway they've bet him twice um, and we're underdogs in both them games, uh, the last day and then the day in Parnell Park. So, um, yeah, uh, we were lucky uh, that we we were lucky at the time that we had players like uh, Peter Kelly to go on him. And then I suppose before that, uh, Tomas Brady, um, before he defected to the footballers, uh, we used to put him if he was in full forward, uh, Tomo would go on him. Uh, so, yeah, we, we were lucky that we had players at that time to, to look after those lads. Uh, Michael Ryan is having trouble connecting there so I'm not sure we're going to have Michael on the show but uh, we'll blast on all the same Dublin against Cork in the quarterfinal this weekend Tipperary against Watford and the other one that will be down in Park and Tweed the Nicky Rackard final is on Mayo Tyrone Laurie Maher final for Manna and Cavan three cooler lads playing there Ryan you might know a couple of them the Killian and Colm Shane and, and uh, Brian Fitzgerald yeah. and then Derry Offaly in the Christy Ring final so we'll touch on those as we, as we get further into the show but no better place to start than Tipperary and Watford this one is personal. Two men you know, Liam Sheedy, Liam Cahill. You, 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 you were on the tip panel with Liam Cahill for a year under Babs, and obviously you'd know Liam Sheedy for him, for him managing it. Yeah, uh, look, I, I think regardless of them as individuals, both of, them have, both of them have really shown how good they are at managers. Uh, Liam, his first year with, with Watford last year, getting him to an Ireland final, Um I don't have to say what Sheedy's done. He's won what two or three All Irelands now at this stage. He's he's collecting them on his mantelpiece. Um, and they, yeah, look, they they show great pedigree. Bottom came. Bottom started off with the the tip minors. Um, uh, Liam won uh, an All Ireland with them in was it two thousand and six. Um, and then you go. Uh, Liam Liam Cahill uh was brilliant with the the minors and then under twenties again. Um, so yeah, the both great pedigree but great uh results so far um so and look before the draw was even done it was kind of it was written in in it, it was there that yeah Watford are definitely going to end up playing tip because if the the tip connection with both um the the history that uh Watford and tip have um like look uh, look I know I'm a tip man I'm a proud tip man but like the the Watford team of the early two thousands, mid two thousands, that was just magical. Like they were they were my favorite team, apart from Tip at the time. They were they were my favorite team because they were full of characters. They played a phenomenal brand of hurling. They they just played off the cuff. They played 
personally, I think they played the way Hurland should be played. Um, they just uh, they went out, they won their battle. At times, they shot a bit headless. They were shooting from 90 yards rather than giving it to man in a better position. But they, they were a phenomenal team to, to play. Um, so I'm, I'm delighted that's the way the draw went. Um, and yeah, look, at the moment, I gave it, I, 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 I think Tip might shade it, but I wouldn't be surprised with Roar for the win. Yeah, because both teams have kind of been Jekyll and Hyde so far this season. I was at the Waterford Clare Day game the first day out. Clare deservedly won that match, could have won it by more. And I ran into Michael Ryan at half time. It's a shame he can't join us here. And like the look on his face, I mean, he was as disappointed as anyone with how they were going. They were poor against Leash. They were they were losing the game in the second half water break. And then they went out the last day, went 16 points ahead of Galway, even though they were a man down. And only won it by uh, was it five for a finish, so they're very yeah. Jekyll, Jekyll and Hyde. But and I think it, it it went down to two uh, or to three, three there yeah, with yeah. a few minutes to go, um, and you're thinking, oh Jesus, uh, could Galway do it? But uh, no, Waterford just battled it out. But um, I think the first day against Clare, and look, it's grand hindsight is a great thing. But I said it before the game, uh, Prunty was missing that day. Yeah. Uh, Ty De Burke, well, Ty, Ty's missing for the full year. Well, like, that's the centre of your defence, your full back, your centre back gone. It's going Aaron to take time for them. Yeah, the, and look, there was a few weren't playing. I think since then, they, they've steadied the ship a little bit more. Um, I think against Leash, uh, I didn't see the game now, but I was checking on the RT uh, the website, uh, just getting updates, and I, I actually couldn't believe it. They, when they, there was only a point or two, they were down at one stage. Yeah. And I think, geez, the, surely that's not going to happen. Surely they won't go from All Ireland finalists down to down to getting bet in the qualifiers by Leash. Um, but they did. They pulled through, and they've they've just gotten gotten stronger since. You saw the last day. They just they blew uh Galway out of the water. Um. But then you have to wonder way how good Galway were, um, and I'm not geez, I'm not for one second disrespecting Watford. It's the same, it's the same when I was hurling with Dublin, and same this year with Dublin. Instead of uh, Dublin playing well, Watford played poor. The same the last day. Instead of Watford playing brilliant, oh well, Galway weren't at the races. But you have to ask the question: How good um, were Galway? Galway were phenomenal at the, by the end of the league. They were saying everyone was saying they're the only team to put it up to. That will put it up to Limerick, possible All Ireland finalists. Um, I I didn't buy into that to be honest. I said there's no, there's a lot of miles on the legs with with Galway, um, and I think it, it it's proven uh, the the matches they played this year so are in the championship anyway. But that's not taking that away from Watford. Watford went out they they got their tactics spot on. They they there, there's a few lads there that really stood out like Callum Lyons this year. Um, I think has, has been Watford's best hurler, if not one of the best, he's, he's been their best. Um, uh, Austin Gleeson was it took him a while to get into it, but then then played so well when it mattered most. But uh, like they they look, they got their 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 tactics spot on against Galway. Um, and I'm sure I've no doubt that the next day against against Tip that they'll 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 come out with a game plan, they'll stick to their game plan. And yeah, anything could happen. Do you see what do you make of Galway now? So obviously Canning has retired. There's a couple of more in that forward line that I think they've been there for the guts of ten years, not really producing it. I'd say even Davy Burke not coming on in that game. You know, when you're sixteen, yeah, I, in, still not brought it. He must be sickened. Yeah, he must be sickened. Like uh, from from a personal point of view with him, he has to be sickened because he has done so much. He has given so much. Um, and I still think he has something to offer in a certain role, um, but it's to find that role for him. Because look, he's a phenomenal hurler. Like the last thing is like a, a boxer. The last thing to go is their punch power, and um, the last thing to go with a hurler is their hurling brain. Um, David Burke still has uh, so much to offer with a hurling brain. But I, I, I saw the the day against uh, Dublin when he came on. He went on a solo run at one stage, and about five or six yards in front of his man, and could have popped it over. But his man, I, I can't even remember who was chasing him, but his man just chased him, chased him, chased him and ended up getting a hook. Um, so, yeah, I suppose that boy's into it. 
what are his legs like? He and he is an awful lot of miles on the legs between mm. hurling in college with UL, hurling getting taller in club finals with St Thomas's, uh, every year with Galway. An awful lot of miles on the legs, and an, a, a good few of them do have a lot of miles on the legs. So you'd have to wonder how many of them are going to stay around. Um, there, there's going to be an now there might be a transition of a year or two, but there's going to be an influx of new players there when you see them winning. The four all earns in a row they won. Um, the the twenties doing very well the last year or two. Like there's going to be an influx of players coming through there. Um, you saw the other night down the twenties uh beating Dublin. Uh, geez, there was a few there's a few man mountains there. Uh, mm. so like they're going to come through to senior. So there is going to be an influx of new players. Um, but it's just how they how they gel and how they they fit into the setup and having the right manager in place for them to for all those things to to happen yeah i think they have a couple of a couple of years now where they might take a little bit of a step back and yeah I, a bit like tip actually in some ways have they held back the younger guys for too long like we'll probably talk about yeah. that a little bit more now but i'd look at the tipperary team and i think right there's a lot of icons of the game there and you can see why you'd keep them in the team and they won won an all ireland in 2019 so that's going to extend their run a little bit more but if yeah. you win all Ireland's at under 20 and 21 a couple of years in a row and still Jake Morris is the only one of them that's starting, you, you kind of do wonder yeah. a little. Yeah, like, look, you you look at the tip team the last day. Um, You had Porig Mayer, right? He's there, right, correct me if I'm wrong, 13, 13 seasons now. Yeah. Ronan Mayer, no, he's still, he's still young enough, but he he's a lot of miles and legs. You look, Brendan Mayer, Noel McGrath, um... Uh, Shamey Callan, John Rewire, even J- uh, Jason Ford. There's so many miles on those legs. Um, look, I, I, I'm not second guessing Liam Sheedy. I, I'm sure he's uh, he's rather than peaking in well for this year, rather than peaking in uh, July, he has or in June for the league, he hasn't peaking a little bit later. Um, and not he's not flogging him, but still, you have to say. The longer you're there, how much hunger is going to be there? How much, how much drive is going to be there that you might have with a, a twenty-year-old that wants to win every sprint? Um, I know that when you're coming near the end, you you, you might say, "Geez, look, I've done this. I've done this flogging. I've done this this grafting here. It's just about getting through the the league to the championship where it matters." And look, they they're phenomenal players there, but like you said. They've won uh, a bit now with under twenty the last couple of years, and there's no one really putting their head up to to break through and to lead it. Yeah, there might be one or two uh, playing parts, but there's no one breaking through to take on the mantle of Parag Mayer or to take on the Brendan Mayer uh, mantle or uh, Shamie Callan mantle. Or and you forget who's missing as well. Patrick Mayer is missing uh, Bomber or uh, Bonner uh, Mayer. So like he is going personally when when he got injured there and was missing, I said, you know what, I can't see Tip doing anything this year because he's the man that inspires people around him. He's the man that that shows people around him how to work and what to do. Um, and with him missing, um, you no, know, Michael Breen centre forward has 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 stepped in phenomenally, but uh, I'd love to see him back midfield and and. Uh, Bonamar in centre forward, and that would that would solidify a lot. But still, at the same time, he's in his thirties now, a lot of miles on the legs again. Um, how long more are these lads going to be playing at this level? Well, my question is like, do you, like I look at those experienced players, and I think they're all class players, and they're all icons of Tipperary. But I just don't know about starting four of them because, like you talk there about a twenty-year-old wants to win every single sprint. And then I'm thinking, as you get older, you're in training, you're just trying to get through it. Or sometimes you're in a hard match and you're just trying to think, I just need the ball to stay away from me for two minutes so I can get going again. And a 20 I've never said that. Yes, well, look, come on. We both know the feeling. It is true, Lord, to some degree. You're trying to get two games at some time. So I'm thinking one or two of those still start, but maybe one or two of them come off the bench for the last 20 minutes. And not... And I'm not saying necessarily Noel McGrath, but imagine him coming on against the team that's tiring in the last 20 minutes and the, minutes and the damage he could do. That's just one example. Yeah, look, I, I agree with you um, that when you are that bit older, you don't want to be you don't want to be doing all the running or all the grafting. 
But at the same time, as you get older, you don't have to do as much of that because your head does the, the hurling then, rather than your legs so having to do it. Against do it. Limerick, though. I mean, Limerick, you're going to have to do it. Yeah, yeah. Look, uh, look. There, there's, there's different ways of looking at it. Um, if you, if you're, if you're an intelligent hurler, which all of them are, there's no one there I could say is lacking a bit of uh, hurling. They're all in, intelligent hurlers. Your, your head does the running, so you might start the, a, a second, uh, earlier for your run because you've an idea where the ball is going to go. Um. So, yeah, look, there is, I've said it already, there is miles on those legs. How long they're all going to, how long more they're going to last. Look, that remains to be seen. But I, I certainly think they do have one or two games left in them this year. Uh, hopefully three games left in them this year um, to get to a final. I think there is, I won't say there's a couple of years left, but there is one last big blow in this this tip team. Um so we, we'll see we'll see yeah. anyone sound, can win the day yeah you sound a small bit resigned there I'm going to bring up the Tipperary team that I'd like to see playing this weekend don't necessarily think it will people get your comments in and slate me or agree with me whatever you'd like but uh, let's let's have a, a bit of a look at it here anyway so I, I'm having in goals I'm not sure if you can you can see it there but I, I call it out as we're going in goals I have Barry Hogan in the full back line and obviously this will depend on matchups so they might not line out exactly like that but Cahill Barron, Barrett, Ronan Maher, imagine him taking short puckers. He'd be able to put it into the eye of a corner forward from his own 21. Seamus yeah. Kennedy brings a bit of pace back there. Half back line, yeah. Brendan Maher. Brendan Maher, Paddy Cadell, and Barry Heffron. Like Cadell came in the last 20 minutes and he was just bouncing off Limerick lads and got on the ball seven or eight times. Dan McCormick and Alan Flynn for energy in midfield. Michael Breen, because I think he'd, he'd pick up Caleb Lyons the way he did Kyle Hayes. And the goal was the only time that Breen wasn't anywhere near him. And he wasn't, it's not that he got away from him. He wasn't actually just in that area at the time. Yeah. He'd have Ford, centre forward. But what I'd be thinking with Ford is he'd probably drop out around midfield as he did against Limerick, get on a few scores. Maybe Bubbles would drop out a little bit in front of the full forward line. Mark Kyo, because like his pace when he came on, he just got on the ball a load of times against Limerick and other lads weren't doing it. And then have Callanan and Morris inside, but crucially actually hit them a ball in because... Jeez, Callanan was used like a workhorse the last day, and I don't think he, he got any decent ball in. But anyway, that, that's my my team would be a little bit changed. What, what would you think of that? Is too drastic? Um, yeah, no, no signing on McGrath there. Um, you have to wonder, you've Paddy Cadell centre-back. Yeah, he played he played great when he came on the last day. You've Mark Kyo, wing forward, was it? Um, yeah. yeah, great hurler as well. You have to wonder where... You, you don't have John McGrath in that. Is, do you see him? No, I don't think he, he, he's played well this year. Um, and it's grand for us talking. We don't see them at training or whatever. But is there a place for him? Is there a place for Niall O'Mara? Willie Connors coming on? Um, like there, there is, there's different, there's different people you could drop in. And are they going to weaken the team on paper? No. But the thing is, paper never refused ink. Um, yeah, I, I think right, I think the, the forwards I think might be easier to pick. I think the backs is going to depend on who they want picking up who. Um and like you said, with depending on the matchups, you'd have Parg did you say Parg Mar in the wing, was it? No, I I had Brendan Maher, Paddy Cadell and Barry Heffern as the half back line. So do you have Parg Maher starting? Uh not on this one, but again I think he'd be brilliant the last twenty minutes. Ooh, ooh, I, ooh, ooh, controversial. Well, you see, because there, is, there was four lads over 30 years of age, and I'm trying, trying to think for the rest of the season, if Tipperary were to go on and win in All-Ireland, I just don't think you can have four lads in their 30s going into the All-Ireland final. I, like, Watford don't even have one. Kevin Moran's a brilliant hurler, but he, he wasn't even brought off the bench the last day. And I think Paddy Maher was quite good the last day. I think he's a brilliant hurler, but I think... Nowadays, you're going to be forced to work the ball out from the back and you need lads in the full back line who are able to turn and either go with it or pin it 100 yards. So that's why I have Rona Maher back there. I think Barry Heffernan playing cornerback the last day against Peter Casey, chasing his tail, especially when good ball is going in. Like if he's in the half back line, number one, you don't want to hit a puck out on top of him. And number two, when he breaks forward, he has lads hanging out and trying to stop him. So that, that'll be my thought process there um, with that. Yeah, um, look, I, I going through the team, I agree. Uh, Ronan Mar full back, yeah, I have no issues with that. 
Um, I, I think you have to be faster in the full back line than the half back line. Um, because if you get burned in the half back line, at least there's still another line mm. to get through. You get burned in the full back line, it's goal time. Um, so yeah, I know I I've no problem rolling them our full back. Seamus Kennedy gone corner. That 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 is an interesting one. I think physically, yeah, he can he can dominate in there, and he he's he's he's, he's nippy as well. Um, Kyle Barrett, yeah, one of the best cornerbacks in the country. Horrible. I'd say, and that's a compliment. Um, I would have Paragmer starting. Um, now, whether I'd have him starting center or wing, I, I suppose it, it goes down to matchups. Um, I think if anything, and look, I, I suppose I'm saying this, but Liam Cahill knows all this anyway. If, well, if, 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 like, look if, at the forward line. Yeah, like he, if, I, he, if he was wing back, I wouldn't yeah. be landing ball down on top of him. Um, I'd be putting a small nippy lad on him that will bring him over to the other wing, that will bring him out to midfield. To, you know that that I, I I wouldn't be playing uh, just say if he's seven, I wouldn't be playing number ten in the number ten position. I'd be saying yeah, go there for the throw in, and then go to the other wing, go come out to midfield. Your 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 position is between the twenty one and the sixty five, and you can cover all that area. And but it, you can do that all you want, but it's up to the the your your back line then. To look for him and to break out, not just hit hopeless ball. Um, but yeah, uh, you'd Paddy Cadell and you'd Brendan Maher. Yeah, look, Brendan Maher has, has given great service. I know you have a soft spot for him being a Boris Lee man, but uh, mm. look, he, he's given a phenomenal service. I'd have him starting as well. Um, I would possibly push him up to midfield. Um, it, it, like if I had Park Maher wing back, uh, if you wanted to go Paddy Cadell centre back. Um, I I'd nearly push Brendan Maher up uh, middle of the field. Are you going to um, drop anybody, or are we going to play with eighteen men? Uh, no, I was playing nineteen. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I suppose if I was picking a team, uh, yeah, you'd have uh, Barrett, Ronan Maher. I'd actually, I I I didn't think of it, but since you said it, I actually would agree. Uh, Seamus Kennedy, I'd nearly have him, um, corner back. Uh, I'd have Parg Mayer. We'll go with your Paddy Cadell and Barry Heffernan. Um, I'd have I'd have um, Brendan Mayer midfield with Alan Flynn. I, although I'd like to see Michael Breen back midfield, but can't because he, he'd need him centre forward with uh, Bomber Mayer out there. Uh, the forwards. I'd 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 actually go with the same forwards last day. Um, but I wouldn't tell, like, uh, do you know, they're, they're nearly staying in their position. I tell the, I tell Michael Breen sit and we'll work across the forty-five. I tell Jason Ford and Dan McCormick move anywhere they want uh, to keep the lads guessing. Um, and then yeah, I'd probably, I I play Jake Morris close to goal with Jamie Callan and I I bring, uh. John of the Wire out, not, not to play as a fourth in the half forward line, but nearly in between the half forward line and the full forward line. Um, just the, the, the between the 21 and the 45, if he just covers that space, uh, picks up ball and, and shoot, shoot in sight. And um, you've known McGrath in there as well because you've, you've certainly 15. I didn't, and, yeah, so I, I didn't, no, I mean, like he's he's probably got the most magical hands in Tipperary history, maybe Owen Kelly. There's, there's obviously a couple of contenders in there, we won't argue the toss. But it just hasn't. He's been taken off early in the last few games during the second yeah. half, early from the second half. So it, it kind of feels like it's coming a little bit, a bit like John McGrath. We kind of saw it coming. He's unreal, and I, I thought he should have. Sorry, he has been unreal over the years, and I thought he should have come in for the last ten minutes because Seamus Callan, without preseason, looked a little bit kind of out of energy. Yeah. That's it. I thought he deserved ten minutes, but obviously the manage, like the management, are obviously seeing something in training and that's that's making yeah. the team. Well, the, the the thing with Noel McGrath, you're you're going to have uh you're going to have a discussion there. Do we start him and get the most out of him and then replace him, or do we bring him on? Do do we put someone else on? Bring him on then with twenty minutes to go. But then you have to wonder. Well, what what? What's the game? What does the game have to be at to bring him on? Do you know if it, uh, five minutes into the second half, if you're down by seven eight points, sh- shit, do we bring him on now or do you wait um, and wait for ten minutes and want him to change the game in ten minutes? Do you know? So I look, he, he's a phenomenal hurler. He's one of the best hurlers that that tip have ever produced. 
is he a game changer? Like, as in, is he going to snatch the ball out of the air? Is he going to do a, a Kieran Carey, uh, snatch the ball out of the air from a puck out, run the length of the pitch and hit it over from, from 30, 40 yards? Um, I, I don't think he's that. But, but I, I do think he'd come he, in and he'd cut a team apart because he floats into space all the time. And if a team was tired, yeah. like and like look at that Waterford team. We'll talk a lot about them in a minute. There's there's plenty of jokes coming in that this is the Tipperary GA appreciation day in full flow. <laughs> but like if you look at that Waterford team, they all want to attack. Caleb Lyons, Shane Bennett, and Kieran Bennett, they all want to attack. Midfield, Jamie Barron and Peter Hogan. Both of it like Barron loves getting forward. He got four the last day. Peter Hogan. Generally, you'd see him as a forward for Bally Gunner, or I have over the years. The rest of the team, all forwards. Like, can you imagine? Like, a good back has a tough day keeping into Noel McGrath in terms of how he floats around the place. But if he's coming on against a team that's kind of slowing down in the last twenty minutes, as you know, everyone kind of does a little. Yeah, I think he'd do that. Yeah, T- teams will slow down, and the higher the intensity, the more they'll slow down. But this. This Waterford team, they're, they're trained very well. They're primed very well. Now, I know pre-season and all that, there was a, a major uh, lack of pre-season this year. But you look at all of them. They Now, I know they, they, they did falter a bit towards the end against Galway. But they, they were still running hard. It just The bounce of the ball wasn't going their way. They were like Callum Lyons was still busting up and down the pitch. It sounds like I'm in love with him since I've mentioned him about five or six times already. Uh, Jack Fagan. Yeah, Jack Fagan. Jack Fagan was still busting it up and down the pitch um, until he was taken off. Desi Hutchinson, uh, like any time the ball went up there, he caused trouble. Even five minutes left in the game, he caused trouble. So the, the, they have a lot of fitness. Mm. Their game is based around go, 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 go. Um, you can see if any of the midfielders get the ball, Jamie Barron or anyone gets the ball, he has an option with the, the, the wing backs running off his shoulder. It's not a case of, oh, yeah, I have to play up the pitch. He, he just looks left or right it's like a crash ball in, in rugby. Um, so they, I, I think the, the tip team against Watford will have to defend from number 15 because all of the Watford backs, I suppose... It's nearly like a brand of Waterford Hurland that has been there the last 20 years. Like you, you'd see Tony Brown busting up um, and, and scoring from 60 yards. Uh, Ken McGrath, when he was centre back, was always a, a danger to get a, a score to. Um, so, uh, and this Waterford team has the same. Um, so, like, it's going to be a hard team to, to plan against and to to come up with a game plan against. But look, I've I've no doubt there's two two very smart minds there with Liam Cattle and Liam Sheedy. They'll they and backbone by other phenomenal hurling people as well. So they they'll they'll come up with a game plan to counteract each other and it's who reacts best to that or who who implements the game plan uh to the T. Yeah, like Tip were unbelievable in the first half. So I'm talking about all these changes, but at half time, leading two sixteen to twelve points, but even got that sense late on in the first half that Limerick were turning the screw a little bit. I think the management reacted very, very late in terms of making changes. Like we tip got one point between half time and the fifty eighth minute. Like it was a really yeah. slow reaction I felt. And obviously at the water break they did make those changes, but the game was kind of gone and drew the rest of the game. How much you read into that, I don't know. But like if you look at the Waterford League game, which was the I think it was the last league game. Second half, Tipperary lost at 17 points to 1-8 and were, you know, Limerick, or sorry, Watford just ran through Tipperary time after time. Desi Hutchinson had a field day on, on Cahill Barrett who was thrown to the wolves by the rest of the team. And just one other thing, Limerick won that second half 2-17 to 1-5. Yeah, well, look, if, if you're on about the league performances, Galway should still be in the championship. Um, so like, look, I, I think it. Like, you can't ignore it either. No, 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 you, you can't, trend. no, you, you can't ignore it. Um, just a, a side point here. I, I think the league, the last year, the last two, well, a bit of it last year, but we'll say this year has been used the way a league should be about bread and players getting your best, best by the end of the league, getting your best 15 on the pitch. Um, I think that's what the league should be used for, and that's the way it is being used now. I think there was too much into it the last couple of years. Um, it, it became too important the last couple of years. I'm not saying it's not important, but I, I just think 
uh, it was about getting things right and ironing out a few wrinkles um, and then hitting the ground running when the championship starts. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually didn't cop on to that stat uh, that the, the towards the end of the games, Tip are being outscored uh, by a lot of teams that they're playing. Um, and what, what did you say against Limerick? It, it was, oh, what was the score? In the second? 217 to 1-5 in the second half. Jeez, like 217 would win a lot of games by itself. Uh, yeah. over 60 minutes or over 70 minutes win a lot of games um, but that in one half look there at half time I think was it Henry Sheffin said uh, that they, oh no this game is over Tape are going to win I knew Limerick were going to come back I, I knew they were going to come back the way they did come back I, I don't think anyone was expecting that um, I said look there's, I, know, I, I think there's only three points in at the end but I, I thought it was going to be a case of um, they, they'll come back and the last five minutes will be a fight for it and whoever wins is going to win by a point but they, they, they just they were phenomenal um, even as a tip person hoping tip would win uh, you have to hold your hand like you, you have to say well fair fair play to you lads like they, you know it was it was a joy to behold it was it was phenomenal to see uh, so yeah fair play to them um, yeah. but it, it really it laid down a marker for the rest of the year Um but I, I, I think if, if Limerick, uh, I think uh, Shane McGraw was saying this as well, I think if Limerick got bet against Tip in the Munster final, that was them as All-Ireland champions. They weren't going to get bet for the rest of the year. They were going to come out every game with, with vengeance. Um, but the fact that they still won, maybe complacency might set in. You never know. Yeah, there's lo- loads of comments in here. I'll just read out a few of them, and if anyone has any questions they want to ask, throw them in there. Donald Farrell, it'd be very interesting to see how Tip would have used Ryan or Bonner or both in half forward line or midfield. Two fair soldiers made everyone around them fifty percent better for sure, not half bad themselves. Uh, the the Ryan's club mate Ger Brown is surely the man to be drafted in to save Tip. I mean, he is one of the most obvious ones. There's obviously that club rigmarole, which I'm not going to put you on the spot about. That would be unfair. But like he is one of these lads who I think could be hurler of the year in the next five years, or maybe it could go the other way. I just think he's he's got that talent. Oh yeah, look, as regards hurling skill, he's he's brilliant. Uh even I was poking around with his his brother Aaron there yesterday evening with the match. Uh, I was poking around with him and I kind of got embarrassed because uh I just yeah. had to stand still. No, we were about 50, 60 yards apart, and I literally had to stand still, and every ball was coming there. I might have to put a hurley out here, but like literally, he was he was doing a fitness session. He was running over and back. I was embarrassed about my strike, and I was like, "Jesus, this shouldn't be the case." The uh, yeah, just, look, you know? no, no, that, that, it was actually better for me. Uh, imagine with a normal hurley, I wouldn't even reach the, I wouldn't even reach him. Um, but look, the look, Jared, he's a brilliant hurler, um, and I think. When Jar is is uh, surrounded by better players, I think he hurls better. Um, and look, he, he, phenomenal players wish tip. So I think that's, uh, geez, no disrespect to him. I think he would hurl better at an inter-county setup than he would with a club setup because he, he, he just plays better with better players. Um and uh, he shows how good he can be with better players. Um, and yeah, look, I think it, hopefully next year, maybe it might be too late in this year for him to be drafted into the squad. He, he, he's not part of the squad at the moment, but I, I, I've no doubt he'll be, part, he'll be part of it next year when when all this is blown over, the, the change in club situation is blown over. Um, and hopefully hopefully he'll, he'll uh, wear the club colours proud. Mm. Uh, so the, the Shelmanator says Cahill a racing cert for tip job if he does them a solid this Saturday uh, Tom Smullen adds Waterford are brilliant to watch very frustrating if you're coaching them as they die out in parts of games they were far superior to Galway and struggled to get over the line I think most teams are thinking that this year like find me a team that hasn't kind of faded at some parts or even Limerick had a horrendous first half against Tipperary uh, Will I imagine Sheedy this week has been filling the tip players heads with all the media talk of them being too old past it like I think they're all still brilliant as they showed in the first half but then it's does the juice start to run out yeah I, I don't think they're past it I don't think they're past it um, but at the same time there's only so many times you can go to the well um, I know I'm, I'm, I'm good at my cliches here but there's only so many times you can go to the well and there's only so many times you can keep going and they have been going so long now at this stage um, 
And and you, you can see which which Noel McGrath like he would have been a, a seventy minute man. Is he a seventy minute man anymore? I I don't know, and I don't know is that is that he just doesn't have any legs anymore, or is the fitness not there? Maybe with a with no well not as much of a preseason this year. I I don't know. I don't know. But uh, look, there, there's there's still there's still a massive chance there at the weekend. Um, for for both teams, but I I, I certainly think. If Tip can get over this, I certainly think there's an all earn final in him. Whether yeah. they win it or not is a different story, but there's there is an all earn final in him. Yeah, so a few more of the comments I'll just run through quickly. Uh, Jay says, You'd swear the first half of the Munster final uh, never happened the way people are going on. I mean, but you can't help but coming away from the game and go, Wow, with 20 to go, that game was absolutely done. Pow Pow says, Tip will be going for goals on Saturday big time. They know they won't outpoint Waterford. I mean, I think a lot of this is down to, like, t- Tipperary players don't really pass the ball to each other. They just blast it to the clouds or go for their own shot from 100 yards. Like, give the ball uh, in the No, I, I, I certainly wouldn't agree with that. I, I think they're great at picking. The, no, they, they, they're, not, they're not a team like uh, like Cork or, like, Clare or Wexford this year uh, where it's passing through the lines. They're, they're not like that. They're more direct, but they, you, you put a man 40 yards away from and they'll nail him. Um, I think they can. Tip, but I, I think, don't think they do. I don't think they actually pass the ball to each other that much. They, they, oh, like, I, 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 I disagree game. with you there. But I watched. The I Galway disagree. Game year in the league, and I was like, only five good balls have gone to the inside line in the whole game. Like, look at what Limerick do. They work through the lines to deliver a brilliant ball to the inside line. Tipperary don't really do that. Yeah, I, I think Tip would be a middle ground between your traditional hit the ball, get it as far out the pitch as you can, and your 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 Wexford this year where it was literally it was pass, 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 pass. Uh like I personally I would hate to play in the full forward line with the Wexford team because you make a run and then you have to make another run, another run or another run and it's still out of the sixty five. Um I personally I'd like the direct ball if I was in the full forward line because your the the half forward line it doesn't even give them a chance to funnel back. You have more space in there and everything like that. I think taper the kind of the, the medium ground there. Um, I I think possibly the coming out of the fence rather than launch the ball, they could ha- they they could just take a second to to look up and see who's there uh, in the in the next line. But um, I I don't think there's nothing wrong with the, the their style of play. I think um they're getting the ball into the full forward line, and it's a lot easier to score a goal from ten fifteen yards out than it is from seventy yards out. Um, so look, it's a big, it's a big discussion that you could have. Um, I think they could fine tune what way they're playing. Um, when they're busting out of defense to find someone that, that, that line up from them, but getting the ball in there, I don't think is a bad thing. Um, uh, but at the same time, it's about getting the right ball in there. Okay. So we move on to Watford. We've talked about tip uh, a fair bit at this stage, but the way they run the ball up through the middle, like very impressive. Uh, Patrick Kern, he was named to 15 the last day. He was out around midfield in the half forward line, collected the ball, knocked over a couple of points. Jack Fagan, like when they when they actually delivered the ball into Desi Hutchinson, who was the only forward who didn't score, like he's brilliant at getting out in front and linking up with others. Then Austin Gleeson had scored two points before he had to move back out the field after the red card to Conor Gleeson. Stephen Bennett's going to run at you all day. Jack Prendergast the same. Like there's some amount of lads that'll try and run up the centre against Tipperary and they look like they're coming to the boil at the right time. Yeah. No, uh, we, we, we talked about the tip team and where to position lads and all that. Personally, I will put Austin Leeson further back the pitch. Um, look, yeah, he's a phenomenal threat full forward. But at the same time, are you restricting him in there? Are you putting a straight jacket around him? I'd, I'd have him out because he... he he is one of these hurlers that just hurls off the cuff. And if he's out around the middle, he, he can do... I won't say do what he wants. He still has to play for the team, but he he has that little bit of freedom out there where, rather than being restricted in the full forward line. Um, look, Tip know what they're going to get. They, no, they don't know uh, position-wise what they're going to get, but they have an idea what they're going to get with um, the, the gameplay that they're going to do, where it's a run off the shoulder. Uh, they, they'll shoot from 60, 70 yards if it's on. Um, I think that's the one thing that uh, has stood out for Waterford this year. They try to give the best option. 
they're not trying to get their name on the scoreboard or anything like that. If the if the shot is on from 60, 70 yards, well then yeah, they'll they'll take it. But at the same time, they're playing nearly what I said that I, I'd like tip to play a little bit more of that the when they have the ball, rather than just launch it first time, they're head up, they're looking for the man in the line uh, in front of them. If not, well then they're looking the line past that and giving the ball into the space. Um I think the way Waterford are playing, it's a very, it's a very easy way. Uh, it's a very easy style to look at, um, and it's a very attractive style. Like looking at them, it's not a case of just fucking hit the ball, just hit the ball rather than this tippy tappy rubbish. Um, there you go. So, you know about Wexford there, yeah. Uh, no one in particular. Um, uh, just a, a general style of play. Um, but yeah, Wexford basically. Uh, look, I, I think Wexford have, have brilliant players. I think they've underachieved um, the last year or two. Um, and I, look, it's a whole other debate. I think it's time for them to move on. Um, From Davy. But yeah, I, I know I'm not the only person saying that. I think it's time for them to move on from Davy. Um, I think they, they've had uh, one or two coaches the last year or two, like the, the Brendan Bugler there last year. They've um, Niall Corcoran this year. I think even if you got both of them back in as coaches or selectors, part of the management team, and possibly someone like Eddie Brennan to take over, take him out of Kula, because... Uh, <laughs> well, but, uh, <laughs> but possibly someone like him, uh, like you saw what he did with with Leash, um, I think he would he'd reinvigorate them. Maybe they might need a year to to get out of the uh, the like. I've no problem with the, the the sharp passing thing, but it's over sharp passing, um, and I think that's that's the way uh, Wexford are. And to to play that style of game, they need to be all marathon runners because the fitness that's required for that. You saw against uh, Kilkenny. Uh, when they played them, when it went into extra time, they were well on top, um, and they should have won, but they just they faded because they, they they couldn't stay to the high work rate, the high intensity uh, game that they play. Um, I know I've changed the subject there from yeah, yeah, Watford no, to up. to Wexford Kilkenny, but uh, I think Eddie Brennan in there with Niall Corcoran and possibly Brendan Bugler, I I, I think that would be. That that's a dream ticket, uh, for me. Um, along with, with maybe one or two Wexford lads. You don't need all outsides, you need a few Wexford lads there as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's the way they, they should be looking. Um sorry, go back to Waterford. I think the way Waterford play, I think it, it's very nice. There's a there's a man on the shoulder. They don't have to give it to him, but if they give it to him, he's running at pace, he's not taking it standing, and they're always looking to give the no, they don't always give the best ball, but they're always looking to give the best ball, and I think that's a it's a it's a great way of playing. It's a very it's a very nice way of looking at a team, and it, as a spectator, it's very nice. Yeah. Well, the question marks, if there are question marks over Watford, would maybe be from one to to seven to some degree. Uh, Sean O'Brien was drafted in for his debut the last day, and Billy Nolan was dropped. Now, a lot of people in Billy in Watford would have huge time for Billy Nolan, and Sh- Sean O'Brien is a young, good keeper, but. That raised a couple of eyebrows. Conor Gleeson, much like he missed the 2017 All-Ireland for probably just a bit of a lash out, an impulsive lash out against Patrick Horgan that day. Same thing here with, with Joe Canning. And he he opened the door for the referee to give him a red card, even if the whole thing happened and just before the start of the second half was a lot. But anyway, so that's goalkeeper has just been changed. Shane McNulty, maybe he'll drop in for corner back. You don't have tied the work. Obviously, he's out for the years, an unbelievable player. Irla Daly's injured, so you have a half back line of three lads who love to bomb on. Irla Daly's a big in. Uh, Irla Daly's a big loss. Um, I think he like I didn't really know him until last year. He came on the scene last year. I was like, "Jeez, where is this lad from?" Because mm-hmm. um, I I hadn't heard of him before that. Uh, but really, really stood up. Really showed how good he can play. Um, if you look at the water bench though. There's very good heads to come on, right? You have Kevin Moore in there. You have Shane Fife's there. Um, you Daryl Lyons, uh, Dumford, um, like uh, what's your man's name? Uh, Montgomery. Um, like there's some very, and I'm sure I'm leaving out one or two lads. There's some very good lads there to bring on. Um, if lads, if one or two lads are are uh, 
uh, aren't fine in form or one or two lads are having a bad game. There is lads there that, that can sit in. Um, I think this panel has been tested more. Oh, maybe the wrong choice of word there, but I think you know more about the subs on the water team than you do about the subs on the tip team. Yeah. No, that's um, a good point. Like they've definitely had more game time. They've played four games up to this point, and Tipperary have only played two. Uh, Tip have played three, in fact, yeah. Yeah, think, but, no, no, but no, he, even if only played a semi final and a final, Tip only played two. Yeah, yeah but it, like it, even if you look game time for those players, even throughout the league and everything, I think we, we still know more about the Watford panel than we do about the, the Tip panel. Um, like, look, I. Maybe I'm just name dropping or, or, or look trying to look after my own club mates, but uh, Owen Connolly was centre back on the the tip twenties last year. I I could be wrong now, but I don't think he's had any game time. He ha- definitely hasn't had any championship game time. No, and he his came league on again game time been, the league, but that was it. Yeah, and his league time has been very limited as well. But like, there's someone that I think will possibly have a ten year inter county career. Um, now look like I said it's easy for us to talk we're on the outside and we're going lads that we possibly know we're not at training we don't know, really know what's going on at training but there's someone that you could blood him now maybe it's too, too far gone in the year to blood him but if they if they gave him a bit of game time earlier on in the year well, then they'd have no problem throwing him on now but like I, I see him as having a, a 10 year inter-county career and really really been been a solid solid intercounty player for years to come. Do you think that like there's a couple of comments in there that Watford will find it hard on the third consecutive week? And there was another thing that uh, Patrick Hickey said, which is Tip have no baggage against Watford. Will fancy win and Watford pace has to concern Sheedy. But like it, there's no win for Watford against Tip in the championship since 2008, and Tipperary have had a couple of. 20 point plus wins in that I would say the, the scoring rate between the teams since then it's, it's or the, the scoring differential is about plus 60 to Tipperary in- yeah I, yeah I'd say so yeah um, there, there was one comment there about third third week on the, the trot for Watford I I think that's only an issue if you if you look for that crutch um, that crutch lean on and say oh look our legs are tired third week in a row um, I know I'm going back to us, but like in 2013, we played five weeks in a row. Yeah. Um, and we actually, we were getting stronger week after week because we, we built up momentum. Um, there was a draw, then we, we bet Wexford, a draw against Kilkenny. Everyone was saying, oh no, that's your chance done. But we built momentum, we bet Kilkenny and then we, thank God we only need one day against Galway. Um, but there, there's momentum. I think Watford has momentum now. I, I do think a little bit of that momentum will be taken, or the, the wind will be taken out of their sails, uh, the way they finished against Galway the last day. But they, they, they still have momentum. They're winning games. They, they bet Leash. They bet Galway. Now they're coming up against uh, an old rival, especially if you're down the, the southeast of the county. Uh, there's a big, big rivalry there against Watford, and going back through the years, there is a big rivalry against Watford. So there won't be any lack of effort with Liam Cattle in the dressing room. There's not going to be a lack of effort. So I don't, I don't personally, I don't think um, tiredness or or uh, burnout. I don't think that's going to be an issue because it's only an issue if you let it be an issue and if you look for that crutch. And I don't think Watford are going to look for that crutch. And if you were if you were Watford manager Liam Cahill coming into this game, where do you think you could get at it? And what would you be looking to you know feed Desi Hutchinson, isolate and feed him early, or is there something else you'd look at? I'd I'd run at them. I'd run at them. Um I'd bring the half forward line out. Um if the half backs don't follow them, uh well then you're popping the ball. Every one of those uh players, Jack Fagan, Prendergast and um uh Bennett. They can all they can all score from 50, 60, 70 yards. So I'd be I'd be pulling them out. I'd be giving the ball to them. If the lads follow them, well then I'd be popping it in behind them. I'd try isolate. Uh well de- depending on what the matchups are like. But I I'd certainly try I, I if you are uh, I'm sure tape in the backs will try man mark lads or whatever, but I try pick one that if I was Watford, I'd try pick one that you could target. Um, maybe someone that's big and strong, 
might have a match up where there's someone uh, small and speedy. And if, there is, if the half back line do pull out to mark their men, well, then you're popping that ball not on top of them, you're popping it 10, 15 yards in front of them or to the side of them or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, I think that that's going to be a, that's going to be a deciding factor. If if the half hour line pull out, give it to them. If they don't pull out, or sorry, if the half hour line pull out, give it to them. If the backs don't follow, if they do follow, well then pop it over. Yeah, because oh, it's a shame we don't have Michael Ryan here because I'm sure he'd be he'd be big and big and Watford up to some degree anyway. Because I'm sure he feels like his own county will win. Are you leaning towards Tipperary here or Watford? Like that, the pace of that Watford team and coming down the stretch, like they came from a mile behind Kilkenny last year to beat them. So I don't think it would bother them if they went a little bit behind in this game and they just keep going. Yeah, I will tell you straight out, if Ty De Borca was there, um, I would be saying I would be leaning towards Watford. Um I'm not I, I'm not having an affair with Ty De Borca. I, I just I, I admire him. I think he, he's such a phenomenal hurler. Um and he's a leader and sweeps up everything there. Um but with him missing, I think Tip point or two, um, but I won't be surprised if if Waterford win. Um, I think it'll be about matchups. I think it will be a possible uh, job interview for uh, Liam Cahill for when Sheedy steps down. Um, so yeah, I I I I'll give it to Tip by a point or two, but I I won't be surprised with a Waterford win. That one year that you were on the, the tip panel where Liam Cahill was still there, 2007 under Babs, do you have any memories of him Of him in there? Like, he was a very talented hurler. Yeah, he was a piss taker as well. Um, yeah. He's good, good crack, yeah. Um, he's, he's married to Len Gaynor's uh, daughter. And I remember we were going, we were, we were in her company one day uh, and she tried to hang me underneath the bus because Len was a selector on the under, under 21 team when I was uh, under 21. And I, I, great time for Len. I think Len appreciates my style of hurling. Uh, I, I, I really, really like him. Um, but he asked, the, now I, I, I didn't even cop on that it was Len's daughter. And uh, he tried to say, something came up about uh, the, the 21 selectors and he said, uh, oh, like, what, what do you think of Len Gaynor? I said, oh, yeah, I like Len. I, 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 whatever, you know, I, I didn't say I'm bad, thank God. Um, he said, I oh, know, no, Len's a bollocks. Len's a bollocks. <laughs> uh, trying, trying to, I, I, I don't like Len at all. Just trying to stir it up because Len's daughter was beside us. But um, look, he, he's a piss taker. He's, he's really nice. But when, when his manager cap is on, I've no doubt everything turns serious. Um, and, and look, the, the results have been proven. He, he took Waterford over last year. After not winning a game, a championship game in two years, gets him to an all Ireland final. Um, like that only shows the 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 caliber that Liam Cattle is. Um, so yeah, look, I, I personally I think he he's the next uh, tip manager. I think if Tip didn't have him as manager, I I think to be. I, I think to be madness uh, when, but it's all about when when Sheedy steps down. Um, I don't think anyone's going to push him out. I think he he is he's uh, rightfully earned that uh, the the right to decide when he leaves. Mm. Yeah, well, look, I think uh, you're only as good as your last game too. Like, you're, there's a huge amount of credit in the bank, but um, you know, I, I think a lot. I'm very interested to just see what the Tipperary team is. You know, I, I want to see, are there going to be changed or not? Like, uh, I was chatting with Shane Brophy at Anina Guardian on Tipcast, and he was talking about the Bs had actually beaten the As in the in training matches a couple of times. Now, read into what, that what you will. I mean, it's, it's hard to know sometimes. This was last Friday, and he's expecting to see three or four changes. Now, I don't know, but I'd like a middle point there on that. Yeah, I, I think it's a good thing when the, the Bs beat the As. Um, I think it means lads have to up their game. I think if the A's A team beats the B team, uh, I I don't think I I think everyone is in the comfort zone. I think the fact that the B's are beating the A's, I think everyone, the the lads on the A team can't take that for granted. Then they have to up their game. Um, so yeah, I look, I take that with a pinch of salt. I think she, I think I think there will be change, but I think she will. He'll go what he knows and what he sees, and it. I've said it already. It's easy for us to question him and and keyboard warriors to say they can do better or whatever. But uh, Shady and O'Shea and whoever else is there, they know what's going on 
in the the training they can see the the game the training matches behind closed doors or whatever or, um so i i do place trust in them um and like likewise with uh, with water i i place i place a lot of trust in Liam Cahill and Mickey Bevins as well mm. um so yeah it's going yeah. to be, it's going to be a cracker of a game i think yeah, so then Dublin against Cork and the other one. We actually have a cheeky little comment in here and you're after talking about Wexford, but Will says, ask Ryan, does he think uh, the Dublin County Board would ever look at Davy Fitz? I don't think so and definitely hope they wouldn't. I I, I really hope not. Um, I think Dublin will get an, an initial bust of a year um, like everyone does with Davy, but I, 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 no, I, I think it will be a terrible move. That's yeah. just my opinion. I think it will be a terrible move. Yeah, Dublin against Cork this weekend, Semple Stadium, Saturday at 7 o'clock. They met in that exact same spot last, uh, last was, was, was winter at this stage. Cork won 125, Dublin 22. Like Cork were up by six at half time in their half forward line of Robbie O'Flynn, Shane Kingston and Harnady had scored 11 points from play between them. Um, Dublin didn't play with a sweeper that day. I felt that they should have because of the pace that, that Cork had. I'd imagine they probably will this year. And you know, the game was kind of done early. And Dublin might have 12. If Owen O'Donnell is fit, I, d- I doubt he will be. But they would have 13 of the same starters. But it does feel like there's a different vibe about Dublin compared to last year. Yeah, look, I was Dublin's biggest critic after the league. Um, I, I was very disappointed with how they played during the league. And they came up against the Antrim. And I was thinking, you know, anything could happen here. It could be a serious banana skin. Dublin got over that, and not just not just got over that. They they won very very convincingly and won won pulling away. Then they went out against uh, Galway, and I said myself, I said, "Just different kettle of fish here." Galway, you know, a lot of people are talking them up as as all Ireland finalists. The only ones to put up to Limerick. They got their ta- Mat- Matty Kenny got his tactics right, um, the the matchups right, everything about it right. And and they stuck to the game plan. They got ahead of uh, Galway and just kept ahead of Galway, um, and 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 won convincingly. Then went out against uh, Kilkenny the last day. Now, I I don't believe in having a crutch to lean on and, and making excuses. But the their prep for the game was upset with the the COVID dropouts. You had uh, Keno Callahan. Um, lost from corner back. Which he's a, look, he's he's a great player. You know well from um from playing with him in Kula. He he's a great player. He's just and I mean this is a compliment. I know it might sound like he's horrible. Yeah, he he's is. absolutely horrible. He the, the two most horrible people ever to play against. Uh, or wish thankfully. Uh, Niall Corcoran and Keno Callan. They're just like spider monkeys. They're just all over you. They're just everywhere. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so like he he was a big loss. Now Andrew Dunphy came in and and he played very very well. Um and I certainly think give him a year or two to to develop and he he's going to be. I don't know if he'll be as good as Owen O'Donnell. He'll be on. He'll be up around the same standard as Owen O'Donnell. Um and then you'd Mark Shute came in. Now a good replacement for uh, Ronan Hayes, but still their their prep was it was altered for the game. I had weakened um, them. Yeah, no, it, it did. It, it did weaken them. Would Kilkenny have won anyway? I, I, yeah, I think they would have. Uh, I tipped them before the game. Was right. it? If I put put it to you this way, like you, you might be right that Kilkenny would have won anyway. But their subs came on and scored six points, and Alan Murphy, one of those subs, won a penalty. So that's nine points, and Kilkenny won by nine points. Yeah, look, I, look, I, I I'm, I think. They they would I I think Kenny would have would have won by a couple of points anyway, and I said that I was in with Marie Crow the day or two before it, and and I I tipped even though it, it killed me saying it I I did tip uh Kilkenny over Dublin, but at the same time, I I they, I right I think Kilkenny would have won, but the prep that Dublin had was altered. It was uh it was messed up a bit. Their their mind frame could have been messed up a bit. I think instead of the, the nine point win, it could have been a four point win or a five point win. Do you know? I don't think the lads missing would have made a, a, a ten point difference and Dublin winning by a point. Um, but look, the, the lads are back anyway, as, as far as I'm aware, they're back. So that the, the, hopefully they'll have a full uh, cast 
to to pick from. You're saying the only one that is possibly missing is O'Donnell. I hope he's back for it because then, like, look, I think if you go through all the fullbacks in Ireland, I think he he'd be in the top one or two. Um, he just he does the simple things right. Uh, it doesn't look like he's ever sprinting. He never looks out of breath. Um, and yeah, he just does the simple things right. Uh, do Dublin have enough to beat Cork? I think they. I think they'll they'll get their matchups better than they did last year or last November against uh, against Cork. Do they have enough to beat them? I I don't think so. And is that um, the scoring issues? I mean, you you played at Ronan Hayes, and he was a massive loss to last day. Like I look at him, and I don't want to put pressure on him, but and I. You know, it'll take a few years to get to this level, but I look at the size, the speed, the wrists, and I think, God, he, he, there's a bit of Seamus Callanan around him. Again, I'm not trying to say quite that level, but I just look at him and I think, God, there's a lot of class there. Yeah, look, I, I, I heard with uh, Ronan in, with the club. I heard with him in Intercounty as well. When he was just coming into the, the senior panel with Crokes and with Dublin, I wanted to kill him. I really oh, yeah. wanted to kill him cause, because... Absolutely brilliant hurler, physically big, strong. Um, but his immaturity, I was really fit to kill him. I can't say that about him now because now look, I'm not, I'm not training with him now, so I don't, I don't know for definite. But I'm saying the way he carries himself, the way he he plays hurling now, the way he goes to it, drives through it, he's not shying back from anything. It looks like he's after coming on. Which you look, you look at Shane McCallan. Uh, since you mentioned him, you look at Shane McCallan when he came onto the the tip panel first. Uh, everyone was saying, "Oh yeah, he's he's a you need a mulliker beside him to give him out the ball so he can score." And yeah, he did that. You look at him now. He yeah, he's still well at the score, but he's able to win his own ball. He's able to do everything. He's a real leader. I think uh, Ronan Hayes is is becoming that type of player where you can lean you can rely on him you can lean on him uh you can hit any type of ball into him he works if he doesn't have the ball he works he's 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 what i look for in a, in a forward that yeah you get your you you're you're able to score and he's well able to score he's always been well able to score but he's able to tackle he's able to defend he's able he, he he's able to get a turnover up there he he has that never say die attitude did he have that never say die attitude five years ago? I I questioned it. I questioned it, but he he has that now. And well, maybe he'll cut the back off me for saying that. But I I think a lot a lot of people will agree with me that he has that now. And uh, even though in a, a roundabout way, I'm actually paying him a compliment here. But he has that now. He has that drive now, and that that dependability that you can you, you could be under pressure and you don't have to give the perfect ball in. You can just hit the ball in and. If he doesn't win it, it's not coming back out easy. Yeah, I like it. It's hard to know who will be playing for Cork this weekend because Cahalan was injured the last day. Colm Spland has been out for, for ages, so I presume he's not involved. Uh, Owen Cadigan was also out. So maybe he'll be up against Robert Downey and maybe his legs could give Downey a little bit of bother in there. Sean O'Donoghue, um, I'd imagine Sean O'Donoghue would probably pick up um, Keen Boland, maybe. Like, Boland's been playing well. And then Danny Suckliffe. Ger they might put Jeremy Millerick on him, try, try to tag him. But Sutcliffe is actually back to 2013 form. Like he's been yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah, certainly. Like, look, I, I'll be the first to say when they named him captain there last year, I kind of I questioned it, but he has really stepped up. He has re he's leading by example now. And sorry, I, I didn't question it because I doubt Danny. I questioned it because. I suppose being in the dressing room, I've seen there's other leaders there. There's Liam Rush, there's Owen O'Donnell, there's Chris Crummy that, in my mind, will be captain material. Mm. Um, but he has really, really stepped up. He has, he's really driving on and he's, he's not just, like, he's trying to bring other people into the game as well. You can see he's getting back into the half back line. He's back in the full back line there, the, the last game at a few stages. And he drives out and he's delivering the ball in. He, he gave a cross field ball, that, well, a few cross field balls there the last day. Um, and there they were two demands advanced. He wasn't just hitting and hoping. Um, he's really stepped up to the, the, the captain role. And if I'm, if I'm playing against him, I would actually sacrifice one of our half back line 
and just follow him. Uh, or not our half back line, the Cork half back line, mm. uh, just to follow him. Um, even if he went, because he's gone back wing back. And so your your headphones might be running out of juice there. Maybe take out the headphones. Yeah, yeah <laughs> maybe just flick them off. I'm just going to go through a couple of comments there for a second. Uh, just hopefully your audio comes back. Porter, Porter, do Dublin have enough to be Cork? No. Haha, <laughs> Stapo references Callan every chance he gets. And someone uh, uh, adds in then that I hadn't brought him up for two minutes, to be fair. Yeah, there it is, actually, from James Coughlin. Uh, Will, Davey has bought a few pubs, I think, and he has an ice cream parlor in the Hinch as well, I think. Plus, he owns the fittest family. He's enough to keep him busy. Um, and then Porter, Porter, Corker, Cork. Has your audio come back there? Uh, yeah, I can, I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, perfectly. Perfect. Um, so, Len, looking at the pace in that Cork team, and driving forward, well, you obviously have the ball player, Mark Coleman, at the back. Tim O'Mahony loves to drive forward. Dara Fitzgibbon, Luke Mead is a brilliant playmaker. Then the pace of Robbie O'Flynn, Kingston, Hardy, Jack O'Connor burned Paddy Smith to set up the Declan Dalton goal last year. And that's before you even get to the likes of Patrick Horgan. So the, the attacking weapons, I think that's why most people are leaning towards Cork. Yeah, and, and look, it's, it's understandable. Like, I've not had a good year, but I think Cork... Cork have more like you're right. If you shut down one or two Dublin players, they're going a long way to beating Dublin. Mm. If you shut down one or two Cork players, there is more Cork players that can step into that fight. Um, you look right, Pat Horgan, he's the obvious one, but then you have uh Shane Kingston, Alan Cadigan. Oh, this might get me killed by Cork people, it can be brilliant but can also be go out of games. Um, but he can change a game in an instant. If Jack O'Connor, Robbie, Robbie O'Flynn, Seamus Harnley, I think, is... Like, he... You go back to Niall McCarthy, he brings so much of that type of game. Now, I think he's a better hurler than Niall McCarthy, but he brings so much of that type of game of the, the hook and the block and the hassle and the work rate, the winning a dirty ball, giving it to someone in a better position, um, running at the defence. He uh, He's horrible to run at the defence. He just, because he's physically strong, he's he's a powerful runner. So anything could happen from it. Um, so yeah, look, there's there's a few there now that, that can change the game. Then you go into, you go into the backs, right? Tim O'Mahony, right? He's, he's played in the full back line. He's played centre back. And um, he seems to have settled wing back now. Um, I think I he he's not going to be on Danny Danny Sutcliffe. I think Danny has too much in the legs for Tim Manny. Tim Manny's type lad, like Chris Crummy, you'll be laying the ball down on Chris. Possibly Tim Manny, he, he could nearly stay with him with for legs, but would would be able to contest in the air as well. But um. Yeah, you, look, I, I think matchups, you wonder who's going to mark Danny and whoever is going to mark Danny to go with him. But at the same time, if the right, Danny's playing wing forward. If the wing back goes with him and goes wherever he does, you're leaving a big channel there on one side of the pitch to hit the ball into it that can be exposed uh, for, for, for a corner forward. So I, there is there is questions that... that um, Cork have to answer as regards how are they going to counteract players, but I think Dublin have to answer those questions as well. How are they going to counteract uh, Cork's big players like Dara Fitzgibbon midfield? Do we have a midfielder that do Dublin have a midfielder that can stick with Dara Fitzgibbon? And then even if you keep him quiet, Luke Mead, he can pop in and cause damage as well. Um, yeah. So like it's it. going to be it's going to be an interesting game. Um, and there's going to be enough to, to answer. Yeah, and even when you think about Cork's performance against Limerick, the first I said this a few times that a few things went against them. Their own puck out exploded at times. Uh, Patrick Horgan didn't play well. Robbie O'Flynn played well. They had two goals as sucker punch before half time. Still stayed going. And then, but for so many wides, middle of the second half, you don't know. Maybe they could have pushed it further. Then the last day they were up and down against Clare. I mean, you're a Tony Kelly shot away from going out with a championship. But all of a sudden, it feels like I kind of have this feeling that the Cork takeover is going to come in the next while because they look at the under 20s under Pat Ryan. They won the All Ireland, yeah. the delayed one from 2020. What they they won the Munster final last night against Limerick without Alan Connolly and Shane Barrett. 
I mean, it feels like the cork the cork train is coming. Yeah, I I would seriously worry about cork in a couple of years. Like give it three years. Um when you look at the likes of Fitzgibbon, uh Coleman, you look at at uh Kingston, all of those players coming into our mid to late twenties, and then you have this this waft of uh, under twenties and minors coming through. It, it, they're going to be scary. They're going to be scary, and it's going to be. Uh, I hate saying this. Uh, like I hate saying this because I, I hate cock. Um, but it's, it's, it is going to be scary. What what uh, what they can become. Yeah, might get you to shift your phone a little bit. It feels like it's kind of caught in a corner. It's kind of muffled sound there just at the moment. Um, so a couple of the comments in. Uh, the Shellminator, four words sum up Cork pace, four, four letter word, uh, but really uh, rely on freaky, freaky finishing for the goals. Dublin goalie Nolan could cement all star nomination with a decent show in here. Dublin, one of the most physical teams in the country. Historically, Cork don't like that and can buckle on their day. Cork more skillful speeder, etc. But Dublin, much better hurlers than they get credit for. Would you kind of agree with that? That Dublin don't get the credit of the hurlers? Like, look at the lads that come through the last few years Connor Burke, Donald Burke, very tasty hurlers. Like, the Ronan Hayes, we've already mentioned. So it's not just a case of athletes anymore. Yeah, I, uh, but I've been saying that for 10 years. Uh, Dublin don't get credit at all for, like, I, I've said it already in in this piece that uh, Dublin beat what you call one of your, your hurling teams, like Galway, and it's Galway played bad, and Dublin don't get credit for it. And yeah. um, I, think, I think Dublin have brilliant hurlers um, that don't get credit. But as regards the match at the weekend, I think Cork have more hurlers um, that can score from distance, that can cause trouble. It was said there, four-letter words to describe Cork, and that's pace. I think, yeah, uh, Dublin are, are their physical team, no doubt about it, but they're all able to hurl as well. Um, and, yeah, there was another comment there about uh, Alan Nolan. Alan Nolan is what is thirty six or possibly thirty seven now, and he's he's actually playing better now than he's ever played. Um, like the the game against Galway, uh, Dublin played great, but the my man in the match and that I think Conor Burke got man in the match. My man in the match is Alan Nolan because if two of those, if one of those opportunities went in in the first half at the start of the game, it could have been a different result. But Nolan got down he, he I think he made three three saves that were certain goals. Um so yeah I'll look Alan Nolan he, he's he's a brilliant player. He's a leader in the dress room on the pitch and as as a half forward he he's very nice to receive podcasts from as well. Um but yeah I just think I think Cork will will I won't even say shade this on Saturday. I I, I think they'll there'll be possibly three, four points in it. Jeez, three or four isn't exactly a hammering now, is it? That's a puck of a ball. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm being as nice as I can. Uh, well, can Cork... No, I, 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 I think, think I, it will be Cork for me. Do you think there's the soft under, underbelly of Cork is still there, whether it's today or the next day? I think they're a work in progress. Um, I think... I, I think... Right, I suppose you, you label... A lot of people out there label uh, Dublin physical... A lot of people label Cork soft. I don't think they're as soft as they, they possibly could have been in the past. Um, I think they, a lot of the, I'm just looking through the names there, a lot of them um, have a lot of experience now. Um, there's there's a couple that were there in 2013 when they got to the final. They were seen as soft that year, but still got to the final. Um, they, and, and to replay as well. Um, I think... I, I think the the soft underbelly or the the, the, the soft centre to, to talk, I think is a little bit unfair. I think it's a ta- it's a tagline that they they've picked up over the years that I think has stuck with them. But I think if if I'm playing against Cork now, if I say that I, I'm not going to say to my team they're soft because they're not soft anymore. And mm. um, they, they it, yeah, it might have been justified in the past, but I don't think anymore. And um, that can that can that can stick to them. And I think if if you do go into a game against Cork saying that they're soft and 
get stuck into him, we'll we'll turn him over, we'll break him down. I, I think that's the rock you're gonna perish on. Um and I don't think Tip or I sorry, I don't think Dublin are gonna go into the game with that mentality. Yeah, a few comments in there. Michael O'Callan said Cork had seven clear goal chances the last day. I can see them scoring three minimum. Pow, pow. Cork wouldn't bait snow off a rope in a hot kitchen. So <laughs> the comments are going up and down on them. I think we're both going Cork anyway. I think it'll be tight. Yeah, enough. as much as it kills me, because I, 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 I would love to see uh, them go a step further, not just one step further, just two step, three steps further by winning it. Um, but I, I just can't, I can't see them winning this event. Um, even Pat, Hall, or Pat Collins in goal there. Um, he's in, I won't say he's a new find this year, but a new addition this year um, with Nash stepping back. I think he has a lot to answer, uh, a lot of say in this as well. His cut out, uh, his command of the full back line is going to dictate a lot at the weekend. Yeah, OK. So also this weekend, the Christy Ring Cup final, the Nicky Rackard final and the Laurie Maher final. So last weekend, we'll just come to the to the Christy Ring Cup final, first of all. Uh, Derry beat Sligo 28 points to 217. Cormac O'Doherty scored 12 points that day. Offaly beat Wicklow 630 to 10 points. And I think Offaly are just massively favoured in this game. Michael Fenley, I'd say the pressure on him to deliver locally is probably there now. They saw the under 20s winning a football Leinster final last week. I think they want to keep that that kind of good vibe going. Um, I'll just preview yeah, the other one. I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, no, I was just saying that about, about Offaly. Like, I think, and no disrespect to any other, the other teams at the John McDonald or at the Christie Ring level, but I think Offaly got the fight last year. They were expecting to walk it last year, got bet in the semi final by down, and then down went up by getting to the final. And I think, I, I, I don't think anyone in the, in the Chris Young is going to live with Offaly. And I said that at the start of the year, and I'm saying it for the final. Look, fair play to Derry. They've got to the final. They, they're, they're, they are holding very well. Um, after the last couple of years, they've been coming under, um, under John McAvoy. He was manager there for a couple of years with Danny McGurk, and they, they were coming under them. Um, I think they've got one or two players back this year that, that has certainly helped them. Um, but uh, look, it's, it's awfully all the way. Um, and I think with the with the cash injection from Shane Laurie, I think they should be splitting awfully in two. Um, <laughs> yeah. But no, look, uh, in, on a serious note, look, they uh, obviously should be hurling at a higher level with the, yeah. the club hurling that they have there. Um, they should be hurling at a higher level. Next year with, in the John McDonough, um, I know look, next year we don't have to look forward to next year yet, but it's going to be interesting. You've, you've a lot of teams there that can possibly play at Lee McCarthy. Um, because I think if Lee McCarthy teams, it's a bit of a drop back to John McDonough, and then I think it's a big drop back to the Christy Ring. Um, so yeah, to be look to be good for Athlete to get back up there, back where yeah. they, they should be and they should be hung at a higher level. So it's good to get them out of Christy Ring. Without doubt. And the uh, Nicky Racker final this weekend, it's Mayo Throne. Mayo beat Armagh handily enough last week. Keith Higgins scored 11 points in a 14 point win and then Tyrone beat Donegal so Conor Grogan and Keen uh, Ferguson got the scores there as it turned out right and and this is probably an experience for many managers I know you're coaching Finn Gallions in Dublin but Mickey McShane he took over Tyrone this year and he had his first uh, training session met the players for the first time on April the 20th three months later he's leading them out at Croke Park and he was the lad who led uh, Schlock Neil to Derry in Ulster club successes so he's Getting a, a sweet tune out of them quick enough, but um, then from the um, from the Mayo side, they actually beat Tyrone by seventeen points last year. So it'd be a bit of a turnaround if they were to if they were to if Tyrone were to win this game. Then also, I'll just run over to Laurie Maher, and you can react to that. Then Fermanagh are against Cavan. So like ten years ago, Cavan actually folded up the tents when it came to Hurland. They were after getting annihilated by South Down by forty one points, conceded twenty six goals in five league games. They actually pulled out of the 2011 Laurie Maher Cup, disbanded. For six years, they had no team. And then the, it was like the Seamus Hughes, Owen Morris, even the GA president at the time, Aegon of Farrell, turned it around. Dinny Cahill took over the team. And they came back for the 2017 Laurie Maher Cup. And here they are just four years later back in the final. Fermanagh lost the final last year, won it in 2015. They've actually got a few players that people might know, including uh, Barney McCauley. He was a Club All-Ireland winner with Loch Giel in 2012. 
Rory Bannon, Kevin McGarry, he won the Christie Ring with Down. I think he suffered an eye injury against Longford. He might be all right. But um, yeah, like it's an interesting one. It'd be a brilliant story for Kevin, considering they were a bit of a laughing stock. But to, to turn it around at this stage, that that would be brilliant to win this. Yeah, I think for a long time they were the the Kilkenny of the the Harlan or the, of the football world, like the Kilkenny in football, Kevin in Harlan. But um, look, it is it's a, it's a great storyline that the the few years ago they didn't have a team. Um, and now they're competing in a national final. And look, it doesn't matter what level it is, whether it's Laurie Mayer, Christy Ring, Joan McDonough, Nicky Racker, Darlene McCarthy, they're, they're competing at a national final. And that's great. And it shows that with a little bit of effort and a bit, a bit of investment in as regards time and effort, um, that things can be achieved. Now, I've no doubt if that group sticks together and Hurling is promoted, that next year when they go up, Nick, well, Oh, uh, do both finalists go up or just a winner? Just um, but and anyway, if they, if they do go up to Nicky Rackard next year, that they they'll hone their own and they'll they'll they they'll compete at that level as well. Yeah, the likes of Sean Keaton. Now he he'll be fancied as one of the local cabin boys to to shoot the lights out. And then three of my club mates, uh, Colin Shane and Killian Shane and and uh, Brian Breezer Fitzgerald, they'll be looking to get a bit of Crow Park glory. And like to win a Crow Park, no matter what level you're at. Is, is brilliant and I think football yeah. should go down that route too uh, I think we've it all said have we um, yeah I think so we have a fair bit said now so there's a good Although we, we won, Cashel won the Crossfield Cup last night so I'll add that in there yeah, fair play to you I, it was it 30 years now since he won the tip senior and I'm going to back you to win the Shame Soreen handily this year oh, geez, thanks I'd love to share your confidence yeah alright well look thanks very much Ryan O'Dwyer appreciate it and uh, we'll chat again soon enjoy the hurling over the weekend no, I don't. Thanks, Shen. See ya. The Hurling Show, brought to you in association with Torpy. Torpy are leading hurling into a new future with Bamboo, a revolutionary hurley created using their unique engineered hurling performance know how. Already being used by many inter-county players, Torpy's Bamboo is highly sustainable, offers players greater striking distance and a more consistent balance every time, without compromising on natural feel. Check them out on the Torpy website and in the link below and enter the promo code OURGAME to get yourself 10% off.